Hello everyone, Ron and David here, coming to you from our website, astrologynewsreport.com. Now we look at the upcoming planetary patterns and predictions, what's in store in the heavens for March 9th to March 16th and beyond. Mercury enters Aquarius on Tuesday, March 11th. The planet of rational thinking, data and information, communications and the media will be in the sign of social causes and humanitarian acts for the next three weeks until April 3rd. Mercury joins up with Neptune like it did back in early February. Mercury plus Neptune is the planet of reason and the rational mind plus the planet of fantasy and the irrational. Both Neptune and Aquarius have a soft spot for the downtrodden, so the social idealists will get a boost from this combination over the next few weeks. But as far as rational thinking and making decisions go, this is a combination that, well, doesn't look so good. We have Mercury, the planet of rational thinking, and Neptune, the planet of fantasy and delusion. It is a change from when Mercury was in Capricorn, where it was far more practical and realistic. Yes, and then we have the media effect. Mercury is the planet that rules over the talking heads, who will be less than realistic in their commentary while... Neptune is tweaking their thinking, more misinformation and disinformation, and dreaming out loud. How long did you say this goes on for, Ron? Well, the exact conjunction of Mercury and Neptune will be on March 22nd. So we can look forward to the wishful thinking and irrational verbiage to intensify for the next two weeks. Yes, indeed. The full moon will be next Sunday, March 16th at one degree, or almost two degrees, in Virgo. This marks the culmination of the energies of the Hindu lunar month, Falguna, named for the nakshatra of the full moon, which falls in Uttara Falguni. The month of Falguna is good for marriage ceremonies, dealing with authorities, performing rituals, and new beginnings in general. Okay, so that's it for significant new events in the heavens for this week. So now let's go back to the Mars retrograde conjunct Rahu situation and speculate on some of the other outcomes from this unusual pattern, which will be with us until Mars separates from Rahu on March 24th when it enters Virgo. How about if we take a look at what effects retro Mars and Rahu have in the charts of some powerful people? I nominate President Obama and President Putin for starters. The two leaders have both been forced into positions where neither one of them can afford to back down. If Barack Obama backs down, he will be greatly criticized for being weak and for having been beaten by Vladimir Putin once again. And if Putin backs down, he will be greatly criticized for being weak, abandoning the Russians who live in Crimea. In essence, Obama and Putin find themselves trapped in a macho game of chicken and critics on both sides stand ready to pounce on the one who backs down. But this is not just an innocent game of chicken from a 50s movie. This is the real deal. And if nobody backs down, the entire world will pay the price. So in Putin's birth chart, the Rahu retrograde Mars combination, along with Saturn, is transiting in his ascendant, since he is a Libra rising person. And this is a strong but dangerous position. When it transits in the first house, Rahu provides a lot of push to express oneself and the potential for personal success. Mars transiting in the first house makes you action-oriented and ready to challenge anybody who opposes you. The retrograde condition of Mars just makes it more explosive when it does go off, and Saturn retrograde makes you dig in your heel. Yes, as you just said, Saturn is there too, also retrograde making him very, very stubborn, and he's not likely to give in. Moving over to Obama's birth chart, we see that since he is Capricorn rising, the retrograde Mars-Rahu combination is transiting in his 10th house, the house of actions in public, and his status and position. All three of these planets are classed as natural malefics. When natural malefics transit through your 10th house, it makes you capable of harsh actions. But since Mars is retrograde, Obama has to be careful of the potential boomerang effect of unintended consequences. 
So for both leaders, the transits are in powerful positions. But who do you think wins this confrontation, Ron? Well, we have to remember that all of this is happening in context. That is, it's not just these two guys pitted against each other. Both of them have their hands tied by domestic realities, the force of history, as well as geopolitical circumstances, such as Europe's dependence on Russian gas supplies, the reality of 60% of Crimea being Russian, and a major Russian naval base on the Black Sea in Crimea. But my bet is that Putin prevails, because these transits in his first house make this already very determined character stronger. I'd have to agree with you, Ron. And besides, all this action is in Russia's backyard, so they have the home field advantage, so to speak. But this is a short-term prediction. The long-term, way down the road, could be a very different thing. The planets are always moving, and the fate of nations is not a static thing. All right, so... Thank you for visiting astrologynewsreport.com, and now on to segment three of this week's show.